is one and all. It is, I'm Merch Shane, pastor here at Keoki Chapel, wishing you well. And praise be to God that we can be together using this means of communication. As we have been going through this month, I wanted to continue uh, with our series of Black History Month. And for today, uh, we want to recognize Bishop Leontine Kerner, Current Kelly, who was, uh, who left the east, southeastern jurisdiction in 1984 to be elected a bishop in the western jurisdiction. She became the second female bishop in the United Methodist Church and the first African American female bishop of any major denomination in the world. She has been described as the spiritual mother of many clergy women and especially the women bishops. And so we give thanks to God for her service to the church. And now let us begin with our call to worship. The God whom we worship calls us to discipleship, to follow where Jesus leads, and obey what Christ commands, to follow when it is not easy, to follow when others think us foolish, to follow where justice leads, to follow where love guides us, to follow even when it leads to the cross. Come. Let us worship the living God who loves us and leads us and promises to never let us go. Let us pray. To find you, Jesus, we must lose ourselves. We don't often comprehend what this means. We are frightened when we hear you say this is hard, a hard thing. Pour into us your courage your faithfulness and your hope that losing ourselves leads us into the resurrection path. Amen. Today's children's lesson, um, we want to talk about many times we hear scary stories or we see scary movies. And I'm sure at some point in time you've read uh, or you're being read to a scary story, or you've seen a scary movie on TV or in the movies, and so many times we get scared um, from all those different events, sometimes just by watching the news. Well, today's lesson uh, deals with a scary story, and that scary story involved Jesus talking to his disciples and telling them that someday he was going to suffer and die. And how hard that was for them to hear that. Uh, as it is for all of us, when we hear news of others that have to suffer and die. But the neat part about this is that that's not the end of the story. That Jesus does suffer and he dies after his being arrested but he comes back to life because God resurrected, has resurrected him. Let him be born again to new life. And so we give thanks to God for Jesus coming back alive and giving us that same hope, knowing that we are filled with the Spirit, that the Spirit is always with us, even though Jesus' physical presence is not with us. Let us pray. We thank you, God, that even in the scary times in our lives, that you are with us and that you love us. Amen. As we come together for our time of prayer today, um, we continue to lift up our colleagues and our friends from our church in their recoveries. Uh, we think of Pat and Paul and those that are sick and shut in uh, that we have not heard about or 
that we know by name. Uh, we think about all those folks that are traveling and uh, need our prayers and our thoughts and concerns. Um, all those that uh, are not living well. But we also give God thanks for all those folks that are helping others. Uh, those that are getting their vaccines and uh, those that are trying to help them with that. Uh, we give God thanks. So let us go to God in prayer. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Continuing to give our thanks for all those that are continuing to contribute to our mission and our vision. I pray that you will continue to help us as we grow and as we learn and as we try to deal with the uh, community that our mission will reach far beyond our walls. Uh, and help others. And so let us give thanks and pray. God, we bring ourselves to you just as we are. We bring our gifts and our talents to you, asking for you to bless them and help them to grow, that they might be food for the hungry, resources to the needy, and love to the unloved. Amen. Hello, everyone. Our gospel lesson today is Mark 8, verses 31 through 38. Jesus then began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, chief priests, and teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and after three days, rise again. He spoke plainly about this, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But, Je but when Jesus turned and looked at his disciples, he re rebuked Peter. Get behind me, Satan, he said. You do not have in mind the things of God, but the things of men. Then he called the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for a man to gain the whole world yet forfeit his soul? Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes in his Father's glory with the holy angels. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Gloria. Let us pray. O oh God, for the gift of your holy scriptures and its timeless truths, we give you thanks. Prepare our hearts and minds for this lesson. And let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our collective hearts, let them be acceptable in your sight. O oh God, for you are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Our text today is taken from the book of Psalm, the 22nd chapter, verses 23 through 31. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, honor him. Revere him, all you descendants of Israel, for he has not despised or disdained the suffering of the afflicted one. He has not hidden his face from him, but has listened to his cry for help. From you comes the theme of my praise in the great assembly before those who fear your you will I fulfill my vows. The poor will eat and be satisfied. 
They who seek the Lord will praise Him. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth will remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations will bow down before Him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and He rules over the nations. All the rich of the earth will feast and worship. All who go down to the dust will kneel before Him, those who cannot keep themselves alive. Prosperity will serve Him. Future generations will be told about the Lord. They will proclaim His righteousness to a people yet unborn. For he has done. May God add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of the word. So I ask you this question. What is the hardest thing that you have ever heard? What is the hardest thing? that you have ever heard. As we reflect on the scriptures, we recognize the difficulty in hearing if you read the first part of Psalm 22, where it also talks about the human one suffering and dying. But the second part of that, praise to God for God's faithfulness within the community, within our worship, with those that are present on earth, those that are in our past, as well as those that are unborn. That praise goes to God. For all things, those that are difficult, those that are hard, regardless, all praise belongs to God. As we look at Mark, that question of what's the hardest thing that you've ever heard? Think about what the disciples heard as Jesus was talking. How did they take in that information? See, this was the first prediction of the passion. That is the suffering, rejection, death, and resurrection of the human, of Jesus. All those pieces that he knew about and told the disciples and the followers, what was going to happen? The prediction. How difficult it must have been for them to hear that. How difficult is it for you to hear that as well? Again, one of those scary stories. But recognize what all was going on with the disciples as they heard that because what they were thinking was that they now have to endure the same thing. They feared what was going to happen to them, what they were going to have to endure, because they thought they would have to go through the same course as Jesus. Peter called Jesus into and rebuked him in relationship to what he had said. But Jesus rebuked Peter because Peter saw things from a human perspective and not from God's perspective. How often do we do that? Do we view things from a human perspective or from God's perspective? 
How faithful are we to God? Are we of little faith that we don't see things happen? Don't believe that they can possibly happen? Don't believe that we can carry on even in the midst of difficulties, even in the midst of our trials and tribulations? How strong is your faith as you deal with life? Are you questioning and doubting like Peter? Is your perspective only from a human side? Then Jesus lays out this plan, if you will, that you must de deny yourself. That is, renounce your self-centeredness. To stop being all about just you. That is to take up your cross. And how often do we talk about taking up one's cross? And do we totally think about how that looks or what that means? See, the Roman symbol uh, for terror was the cross. That is that those that met with the cross, they were the shameful, those were the enemy, so to speak. They were the ones that didn't do well. And how shameful it was that one must die on the cross. Do we see the cross as simply a symbol or do we look at it from a different perspective. Oh yeah, many of you wear a cross, many of you have that symbol in your homes and in your cars and that you wear on your clothing. And what does that truly mean to you? Are you denying yourself and thinking of in a different way? Are you truly taking up your cross, that is, taking a position to help others? Are you looking at those that are different franchised, those that are marginalized, those that are in prison, the addicted, the homeless, the helpless, those that struggle with simply being hopeful? of what life can help them through their daily struggles. Are you taking your burden to the cross and leaving it there? How are you handling these situations? How are you grappling with your cross? Are you truly carrying it? Are you making a, a commitment that is reordering of your commitments and following Jesus? Are you willing to embrace hardship and shame and suffering for Jesus? How are you looking at life? Are you hopeful and are you willing to be helpful for yourself and others so that you too can claim the victory that Jesus is offering? Victory after a journey of pain and tears? Is that what you're after? Recognize that, that old phrase about no pain, no gain. Recognize that what is really beyond that is the victory in Christ. That God is willing to help each of us in our growth and development if we're willing to suffer and sacrifice, to give of ourselves, 
so that we can gain that victory from God. Recognizing how much God truly loves us and wants us to succeed, wants us to be victorious over our enemies. Jesus was willing to bear a cross and suffer and be humiliated for our sin. What are you willing to do and give? Again, we look at this Lenten season and we think about what we have to give up. Well, what we need to look at is not only giving up maybe a comfort, but what can we give of ourselves to help others be victorious? Think about that. What can you give of yourself to help others be victorious? Oh yes, Jesus laid a path for us with hard questions. And sometimes we look at them as being the hardest questions we've ever heard. These commands to take up our cross, to deny ourselves and to follow Jesus. Are you willing to do that? so that you can gain the victory. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O oh God, for all the many blessings you have given each and every one of us. Help us in our struggles. Help us in our struggles with ourselves as well as with others, as well as the challenges within this world. Give us the strength, the guidance, and wisdom to make good decisions so that we can truly be your faithful people. As you showed us in time, help us to praise you for your faithfulness so that we can all grow and prosper and truly be victorious. We pray in your Son, Jesus' name. Amen. And now go forth and show the love of God in this world so that to those to whom love is a stranger will find in you generous friends. May the love of God and the Holy Communion and the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of you, both now and always. Amen. Go in peace. Be safe. Love one another and help those around you. Amen.